have they stayed alive? Well, as a group, I mean, what else are they going to do? I mean, would you give any of them a job? And as individuals, fuck only knows. <laughs> there is a huge amount of hedonism in the band, and that is something that they, they enjoy, and they've worked at it for a long time, and, and it has become a kind of an art for them. These days, it's cool. Everybody's sort of sane and, sane and uh, healthy living. Everybody's got children, so it's not as bad as it used to be. If you asked me that about seven or eight years ago, I'd have said, don't put me on the road with these guys. We all were in our late 20s. Um, you know, and you're allowed to behave as badly as you want. I mean, you know, you of course behave as badly as you want, you know, and Primal Screen behaved probably as bad as anybody could possibly behave, you know. And this song's called Swastika Eyes. confused about nights you spent with Primal Scream because uh, they get very blurry. If you go out on the road with them, you're going to end up in some insane situation. Being shot at, Duffy getting stabbed, climbing along balconies naked, you know, just loads of, as I say, these are all memories that I sort of chose to to us to forget. The Duffy uh, getting stamped in New York stories, like one of those kind of rock and roll stories is completely shrouded in myth. I don't actually know what actually actually happened. The first he thought he got stabbed in the arse, didn't he? Slouched over a bar, pissed out his brains about six in the morning. And then, then about a week later, the story turned out that he actually fallen through a glass table, falling backwards when he got out of his bar stool. I don't, I mean, I don't want to go into it, though. No. <laughs> My mum won't be watching. So In Austin, in Texas, we, we went out for a meal one night and there was these three big cowboy-type grufty geezers in this steak restaurant who were just being really nauseous. And then they come over getting all, oh yeah, about it. And Ennis has split one of them's head right open with the, the expensive bottle of wine, not the cheap one that was there. And then it was steak knives at dawn and then the police came and... But we were exonerated because we're good boys, you know. We just... Righteous defenders of justice, man. So it's a, it's a hobby now rather than a, a way of life. We did enjoy ourselves maybe a bit too much and then you have to pay for certain enjoying yourself, you have to pay, don't you? I think the, dr the, the, the drugs overshadowed the music, not because they talked about it, but because basically they all became junkies, you know? So I don't think that helped. At one point there was probably four people in the band that you thought could have died and then there was like management, roadies, friends, just luck. But you know what, big deal was thousands of people get smashed every week. It's, it's a big deal. Fuck it, man. As long as you can pick up your instrument and do it justice when, you, when you're in the studio or on, on the stage, 
and it doesn't matter whether you're on glue or drinking the Pope's wee, you know what I mean? You know what, I don't really care, you know, because we're still here, we're still making great records, great gigs, bands better than it's ever been, so I don't give a fuck, you know, I'm happy.